Welcome to episode 43, yeah? Yeah. Of Unqualified Game Chat. I'm your host, Zara Lopez. And with me today, Spencer the Legacy. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Again, I have to stop saying I'm back. Mm. Every week I say I'm back. It's obvious that I'm going to be back. I'm the co-host. I've been watching uh, a lot of Steve Brule lately. Oh, nothing makes me laugh like fucking Steve Brule. I just can't. It's like a laughter that's in your chest. Yeah. And, and then it just builds up and then you're just, you, you're uncontrollably laughing. It's so unpredictable, but like <laughs> so earnest. I don't know. It's so funny. There's a, there's an episode where he talks to furries after he goes. Oh to yeah. The I suit. remember that one. <laughs> what about you? You dingus. <laughs> what do you, what do you dress as? <laughs> My brother and I always quote when he goes to the casino and he goes to the change machine and he says, I already found the best machine and win every time. Put in one of paper money, get four of coin money. <laughs> Drag prod. <laughs> I like the that one. Sweet. I like the one where he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Horse. Horse. Uh, horse. Oh, I've, yeah. That's that's been my um, it's been my life for the that's past uh, week. I've just been hanging out, really. I've been behind on a lot of stuff, actually. I feel like I feel like this. I feel like I prepared for December to be super chill, but then all of these games, these smaller titles, start releasing, yeah. and and you have and we have to play them. That's our bread and butter, mm -hmm. you know. If Noisy Pixel doesn't put out a review, who will? Who the fuck will? IGN waits for the Noisy Pixel review. They say it's up. Go, go, go. Yeah, they do. Go copy them. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> take their take their uh their pull quotes. Take all their pull quotes. Take their pull quotes. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> Spencer. Yes. As you know, this uh podcast is recorded every week. Post the podcast services. And uh on Thursdays. Thursdays is the day. We do have some stuff to talk about today, but first I want to ask you the hell are you playing well you know almost two months late to the to the tone i re i reviewed a horror game recently uh a little spooky game it's called happy's humble burger farm and you know is that like a five nights at freddy's bullshit that's what i thought before oh. i played it i was like this looks like it's like oh wholesome thing but actually scary. Mm. I was like, that's not really new, but you know, I'll try it. It looks, I, I haven't really given any of those games a real earnest chance. Mm. So I was like, I'll try this one. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's actually like, it starts as like a burger flipping simulator where you're just making orders for people in this weird PS one style, creepy world. Uh, and then you kind of eventually just kind of choose to leave the restaurant. Like you're like, Oh, I'll explore this construction site near my apartment. And then you find like a huge pig monster and it's a boss fight. And then you, you unravel a, a whole conspiracy about how like you might be in a simulation. How do you fight? How, what's the fighting like? You have to make it rotten burgers and feed them it, a certain so, amount of them. So is it attacking you while you're trying to cook? Yeah. Oh, that's not so nice. you're dodging, you're putting burger pieces together. Uh, you're, you're turning on switches to, to light up the area. Mm -hmm. And then, and, but then like another boss has you uh, like hiding in caverns uh, so that you can find burger pieces to put into a funnel so that you can trap it and set it on fire in like an incinerator. It's, I was really pleasantly surprised because typically this kind of game doesn't appeal to me at all. Like, I'm just kind of like, Oh, it's it's scary and it's like the oh crazy 3D models and they they're horrifying, but a the amount of story that they clearly wanted to put in like you can go to a museum and there's like a planetarium and it's explaining like how there's like planetary wars 
And I was like, damn, there's a lot of lore for a burger game. Like, shit. And, like, the, the monster designs are cool. And the, there's this... It feels like a, a nightmare in game form. I've never experienced... Like, rarely have I experienced something that feels that nightmarish. Where, like, I played it before going to bed one night because I was behind on reviewing it. And I had a weird dream about it. And I couldn't tell for a minute what part was the dream and what part was the game. <laughs> I was like, what part of that did I make up? The nightmares I have are typically that I um, don't turn in a paper at school and then I wake up yeah. and I was like, I'm not really at school. I haven't been in school in like six years. So. See, that, that one's extra scary for me because I'm at school. Mm-hmm. So I'll be like, oh, damn, did I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially like uh, I think about the uh, calculus classes I used to take and the physics, the physics, the physics dreams are the worst because oh, I, I can't remember any of those formulas and then I'll like dream it up and I'll just fuck, I'm taking a test and I have no idea. I'll have a dream. I'm like back in high school, but I'm still like me. So I'm like 25 and I'm like, what a, what a nightmare. Here. I'm like, did I miss a class? <laughs> At least like you missed the class. You have to, you have to do it all again. And I'm like, why would I do that when I'm 25? That doesn't make sense. Why am I back here? Yeah, I'm like, can I just like, do an online course? And- <laughs> um, game sounds cool. I can't picture it in my head. It's uh, it's strange, yeah. But it, it's like, A, it's like a fun play on like, oh, waking up and going to a minimum wage job every day and then going to bed and doing the same thing again is nightmarish. Like, that's mm. that's scary in its own way. But on, some, on the other hand, it's like, some, oh, cosmic horror. You want some Azario lore? Yeah, I do. When I was 20 years old, yeah, I worked at McDonald's for a year. Damn. And was it a horrifying experience? I made uh, quesadillas. McDonald's quesadillas? No, they don't, but I'm vegetarian. Uh... I try to say that at least once every podcast. <laughs> so Just you all don't forget. <laughs> yeah. In case uh, my mo- you ever, my uh, morals. Listen to my morals. Do the the Kathy Bates uh, misery capturing Azario because he's your favorite host. Yeah. Don't feed him meat. Just no. Remember that episode of Steve Broll where he goes to the vegan store and she makes him she makes some tempura and he eats it. He goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, Every, it's, most of Steve Broll's on YouTube. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch like all of it. Oh, it's so the funny. best. It's the best show. And he but yeah, that's it. that's uh, that's what I've been playing. I it's, I think it's only like twenty bucks. If it looks appealing to you, I recommend it. It's not super long. It's like six hours or so, but it's creative, and I uh, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So, what's the What's the Spencer score? I think I give it a four to five. Mm, yeah. that's a nine out of ten. Eight, eight, eight out of ten. <laughs> five yes, times two is ten. Four times two is eight. Oh, Mr. Math over here. All yeah, right. I, I didn't take these calculus classes, mm. but I know a thing or two. Okay. Okay. Basic arithmetic. Okay. <laughs> I know how to add single to double digit numbers. <laughs> All math is just a uh, fancy addition. If you think about true. it. I, I'm saying it's true. Like that's true, but I, I that's probably not true at all. <laughs> um, I've been playing a game called monster rancher one and two dx Ooh, we talk about monster rancher a lot it comes up a lot we don't like go in depth yeah so I'm monster excited rancher to go in depth. monsters roll we're always uh, like rollerblades yeah yeah, yeah. Moochie. But, so I'm, ex- yeah. I'm excited for you to go in depth because uh i'm i'm gonna be playing it shortly so the the in-depth the in-depth discussion that i'll give you is this version of the game doesn't allow you to use your CDs. So if you've been cl- if you've been holding on to those CD books that in your closet over the years, hoping that a new Monster Rancher will come out for you to use them, um, no, you can't use them. Um, they have this search function. The shitty thing about the search function is the while the switch screen when you're typing is touch screen, the actual game is not touch screen. So, and I think that's weird because they do have it on mobile. So there is a touchscreen version, but I would have liked the switch to be touchscreen because I pull this game is great to play on the go because it's a lot of nothing for a lot of hours. You can seriously sink in two hours into this game and not, and not feel because the, the, the goals that you had set for yourself 
are so short that you constantly hit goals. Uh, at least the ones that you put. Um, oh, like the mobile game formula where it's like, here's a, you've accomplished this. You've accomplished this. And yep. you're like, oh, so you feel like you keep doing things. Yeah. The, and, and the thing about this game is it doesn't ask you to actually do anything. Um, the only time limit you have is the life of your monster, but the well, monster stays a life for a pretty long time. Um, you're, you're, you're tasked with training it each you have, there's, there's each month you feed it something and then you have four weeks to decide what you want to train. Um, you could do four different things, but it usually gets tired after a couple. Um, but each monster it's, it's still surprising, like such an old game, each monster has a different personality. So some will listen to you easier when they're younger and, um, or some may not. So you have to like scold them sometimes if they don't do what you ask. Um, and in terms of fighting, you can really create um, interesting fighters. You don't have to just go for um, super strong characters. You can build a character that will never get hit. Just just building up its uh, its speed and oh, that's cool. yeah, and you can build up its skill so that it always lands its attack. It's there's certain things like that that you don't have to sink all your time into training the power. Um, but it's it's just uh the the idea of these two games is just the secrets where I would suggest playing the first one first, at least for one monster cycles life, um, just to understand the nuances of training and and how the random events occur and collecting um discs for potential other monsters. And there's a lot the cycle. Uh it could it could vary. Um every year you'll celebrate your monster's birthday. And then your assistant will tell you when your monster is close to death. Oh, okay. And that's when you freeze them. You can freeze them or you can just let them die. Whatever. If you freeze them, you can do that twice to get to a monster's like um, almost death, you know, and do it twice with two different monsters. And then you can like fuse them together. That's cool. Yeah. You can freeze both of them, fuse them together and get a super strong monster. Um, so there's, there's benefits in that, but the way reason I say just play the first one first is because the second one is the same thing, just a lot more of it. Yeah. So you're not waiting around for the secret events to happen. The, the idea of this, these games are to play them endlessly. You, you, you never have to stop playing them. And I promise you that there's just some monsters that are ridiculous to unlock and it's so stupid because you need a guide, especially the super powerful ones. Um, the, you, you need a guide to do them because there's there's specific people you have to talk to, events you have to complete. You have to like go um, explore tombs and stuff and ruins. But the main screen that you're looking at for the hours leading up is just a stupid ranch. You're just looking at, you know, you're you're not really doing anything. Luckily, they have um, a, a fast forward option. But I wish that it, it would like, I wish there was another option. I know Square Enix likes to give you like 2X, 3X. <clears throat> I believe this is just 2X. And I, okay. I because the, uh, the training animations are unskippable and those are the, what take up the most time just to listen to the fucking music. Um, but um, other than that, I, I just really like these games. I know they're not for everybody. And I, I think I do think that they're better than the than the new Pokemon that just came out. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, I wonder if that'll be controversial on this channel. Maybe. Uh, you, sure. you you did an What's interview. Your audience. With... I could picture them. Your audience being like, "Yeah, Monster yeah. Rancher, fucking rules, bro." <laughs> um, you did an interview with the producer of Monster Rancher, and he did yeah. say that next year we might get a new Monster Rancher. So yeah. I I'm hoping because it kind of sucks for like if you've never played monster rancher because it says um, you can search for the artist and title of a CD and, but it's like nineties music. So it's like Will Smith and like Ari, <laughs> REM, Britney Spears. Um, oh, there's no simple and clean, but uh, no, I, so there is a monster. You can get a monster rancher two that comes from the twisted metal. Um, <laughs> it's a dragon golem, but I tried it cause I know that monster cause I used it before. And it didn't work. It didn't search up uh, Twisted Damn. Metal. So you can't use game discs. Yeah. Uh, so I doubt That's you can use, game. maybe you can use Simple and Clean. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's there. I don't know. You could also just do random where it'll randomly give you it. But the second one has a lot more qualifiers. Um, so they'll just say you're not strong enough 
to unlock that monster. And basically they just mean you need to play through a couple times before you can um get it. There's no like huge event that's like, oh, you're strong enough now, go pull some monsters. They're just trying to say there's like three starters that you can choose from in the beginning of the second one that you just need to go with. And I would Does go with thing carry over from one to two. You can carry your frozen monsters over if oh, you want. Okay. Um but that's about that's about it. And um yeah, I would just say for the second ones, just start with Moochie. It's the strongest monster out of them, and it'll get you it'll get you through pretty quickly. Huh? Um, but then your second time through, you'll you'll probably know have a better idea of what kind of monster you want. It's a good nice. game. Yeah, it sounds like it. <clears throat> it's a good game. Um, but with that said, yeah. Let's go on to our uh, our topic, and I, I want to talk to you about something that everyone seems to be celebrating, but myself and maybe you, Are and maybe you. Grinches, a uh, little bit of Grinches in this holiday season when it comes to this. Have you noticed that this year specifically, people are like calling out, saying Grinch because the song is so bad that like they're saying that if you call someone a Grinch. Cause they listen to the song and it's like, so it's like all these bad yeah. things. So like calling someone a Grinch is like a, probably a lot meaner than you like bitch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, 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 like asshole, it's like, like Grinch. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's every, it's every qualifier in that song. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Yeah. And, but it's like, uh, it's like, do you really want to call someone all those names? Like, you know, the stuff on my shoe and stuff like that. Like, yeah, whatever. I wouldn't touch you with a, a pole or. Whatever. Yeah, it's kind of mean. Yeah, it's a little, oh. I'm starting to think this. Uh, more I hear about this Grinch guy, the more I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so now everyone's like, I mean, people are just ruining all the Christmas songs. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that was so <laughs> genuine. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> um. The anyway. VGAs, the VGAs, the Video Game Awards, hosted the video game hosted by, by Jeff Kaylee, Jeff Keighley, Kaylee, 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 Kaylee. Uh, Hideo, Hideo, Hideo Kojima's best friend, and yes, he'll t- no. he'll be sure to tell you, like he'll tell you, <laughs> like I like I tell you, I'm vegetarian. Every damn day, he finds a way to say, "Hey, I'm friends with Hideo Kojima." Which, to be fair, if I was friends with Hideo Kojima, yeah, I'd tell, I'd tell people. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm friends with Metal Gear, dude. So, so, so uh, he hosts the Video Game Awards, and it's supposed to be like in the Emmys, I guess. For Combined video with like E3, a little bit because there's so many. There's some out. There's announcements. Yeah. I think I think I it's think, leaned more into announcements recently than like categories. Yeah, because they don't they don't actually announce any they, like the like they'll just blow through them really quick. I think because they update the website before they even do the show part of it, right? Is that, yeah. Like so, they so everyone already knows the winners. Um. Anyway, uh, I don't like it. I'm not huge on it. I think it's a little better than it used. To. Like the year where there was the Schlick Hydro guy who was a big razor blade, and he was like fighting. That I was like, I'm ready to clock out. This is this is literally a commercial. This sucks. This is like, this is the worst. Um, with the announcements becoming more prominent, I'm like, okay, like before it'd be like, I'm not going to tune in because it's it's just the commercial, no which it still kind of is. It's but every, now, it's like a, it's like fifty thousand people jacking off Jeff Keeley at once. Yeah. Yeah, and so him, we're not him. just saying this because we didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he can't he can't come unless over oh fifty thousand people are watching. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I don't endorse that. But the, um, but with the you know the announcements becoming more prominent, I'm like, okay, I'll watch so I can see what's announced. So like, I won't pay attention to like best fighting game, Jump Force. One Punch Man, no yeah, Zero. Yeah, One Punch Man, dude, the worst fucking fighting game. Did you get a dartboard and like? Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't there like a weird RPG last year too? Like, it's oh it's my god, a little silly. It's a little silly. So I, I'm I'm not interested in that side of it. Like, I I like I see on Twitter like Alice is like vote for Shimagami Tensei Five for best RPG, and I'm like, 
do you really care? Yeah. Like, is are you gonna put VGA winner on the box? Yeah. So so is now is now like, and that's another thing. It's it's fan voted, but it it kind of sucks for. I don't know. I look at games like um, Sword and Fairy Seven, which is a great Chinese developed game that will never get recognition, you know. And yeah. even if it was on the list, Alice has way more fans than they do, you yeah. know. And they're just Alice is just telling their viewers or their fans to vote for them, regardless if the people have played the game or not. It it's free for them to vote. Yeah. So how legit are these votes? You know, it's it, is it all fan votes or is it isn't it there a committee too yeah there's a committee of like and they all have to jack off jeff keely too illuminati yeah they they have to swallow the semen of jeff (laughs) (laughs) and he just sits there smiling with a picture of hideo kojima on one end and uh call of duty i don't know (laughs) jeff i don't mean this don't cut me off jeff (laughs) When's the last time Jeff has texted you back? Listen, one time I almost interviewed him, but then he ghosted me. <laughs> you know who didn't ghost you? It's Ario. Colin Moriarty. Oh, yeah. I interviewed Colin a long time ago. That was mm. fun. He was a nice mm. guy. Mm. Mm. That was a really that. long interview. I remember transcribing that. I was like, oh, oh, this is <laughs> long. Do I really want to be a journalist? <laughs> yeah, Speaking, it was like, Speaking of... I end my career here. Speaking of really want to be a journalist, I wrote a fucking article. Okay, Azario, bathing suit DLC fucker of the world, wrote a fucking article. And I put it out. um, It was for the uh, Galgun 2. Galgun 2, uh, or Galgun Double Piece is coming to Switch. Cool, Mm -hmm. coming to physical Switch. P-Cubed is doing it. They have a limited edition that's called like Horny Super Edition or something like that. That's pretty Um, on the nose. Uh, it's like horny trinity horny trinity edition or something like that so i say so i say i make the time i make the twitter post like uh double galgun double piece coming to swoop coming west to switch and then i write comma sigh comma with a horny trinity edition available that comes with stockings and that's what it comes it comes with free stockings and uh and I had all these fucking little fucking nerds saying, why the sigh? And then everyone's like, you're just a game journalist, bitch. Would you, would do, you, you do you the fuck I am? Well, I think the rule is if you would feel weird in GameStop asking about the game, you can sigh. <laughs> if you would feel weird going, oh, do you have the horny edition? <laughs> then you're allowed to sigh. <laughs> I it's think not it, a it's not a I'm better than you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm superior because oh I God. see horniness is bad. It's a it's literally called horny edition. Are you socially inept? <laughs> he's Jesus just Christ. He's, he's just a uh, privileged game journalist. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? Do these no, fuck? I don't want to tell my parents when they ask what I'm reviewing that I'm reviewing the horny edition. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. I can I can review, I can allow on my website all the fucking hentai games to be all closed game, fucking tentacles, uh, fucking futa shit. I can have all that reviewed, but the second I put a fucking sigh on a People fucking... People go, oh, you've changed this, Ario. Oh, I, I, I thought better than of Noisy Pixel. I I didn't know this was a beta cuck. <laughs> when did you guys get bought out by Polygon? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. That was... uh. That's when you ratio them. <sighs> no, dude. They were they were ratioing us like there was there was people that were like because I'm not gonna army. yeah the, <laughs> I just I looked at them the people that were liking those those tweets too that were responding and none of them were following us so I was thinking like oh yeah, these, was, people, was, yeah. these people have no idea these fucking anime avatar avatars have no idea I know the anime avatars that are cool and I know the ones that are not cool <laughs> it's true the character tells you yeah. a lot. 
don't don't go changing your anime avatars, Weebs, because uh, there's a lot that I like, and I know the ones that I don't like. Helps us identify who the haters I'm speaking to. Yeah, helps you decide who to respond to. It's my um, academia character. I'm sorry. I you like don't want the show, but you're, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, you got to avoid those. It's a berserk picture. Oh, maybe, maybe. Well, maybe we can have a conversation. Maybe, yeah. depends, on, depends on the berserk picture. It's the horse. Yeah, it's, the, it's the horse. <laughs> it's the horse. I like, hmm. <laughs> if it's the funny little nose creature, then, you know, then we can talk. That's uh, so that was that was sorry. That was just my rant. So I was talking about game journalists and just like, yeah. It's all these awards shows are all just uh, greasing the palms of the uh, of the game industry. But you know what? We got to play it. Um, so yeah, similar to why we have a review, uh, uh, a scored reviews. So we got to play the game. We uh, smaller sites don't have the uh, capacity to not put a score up there because that's, that's all true. anyone cares about. Um, Most reviewers hate scores. That's on, a fact. Uh, especially Jacob uh, from Noisy Pixel, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's 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 tough. It's tough, but we got to play the game. You know, yep. you're gonna see you're gonna see our lists of best games come out. But we give every writer um, their own top five to do. Yeah. So so that way, um, each writer can kind of share what they enjoyed throughout the year too. But with this game awards thing, I just think it's. I just think it's a popularity contest between uh, publishers and developers. Who's who's the most this popular? Does feel the most like a like a high school dance out of all yeah. the awards because it's yeah. like it really is like who do people like the most? And that's it's not like you think all I those mean, you, you think really you think fucking you think all those asshole fucking at fucking bitches on the fucking committee played. Shimigami Tensei 5 or Tales of Arise. You think they you think they have any any idea like what gamers like about those games? Like it's very much surface level gaming. It's you like think, what the fuck celebrities does, who the fuck gamers does know. Jeff Keeley play. What is he what is he play? Fucking uh the Halo? <sighs> fucking halo he's playing halo over there i don't know yeah that's what i'm saying like who gives him uh, who gave him the right to be the gamer king that should just, be me on the throne i think it's i think it's too broad i think movies movies have been around since fucking the 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 1900s you know early 1900s um They've developed. That's why you have stuff like the Emmys because they've developed a sort of uh, you you know a good movie. You know when a movie is deserving of an award. Um, yeah, actors do. There's there's bullet points that you have to follow. There's points. You know they 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 have. But video games, I don't know. I don't it's know. So subjective with video. Like like I'm I'm working on a thing where. I'm explaining why I think Shenmue is one of the best games ever made. And so many people think it's one of the worst games ever made. And it's, it's both are valid. It's not like a movie where you're like, mm. okay, this has good lighting. This has good story. This has good, this it, a game. It like takes up way more time. <laughs> it takes way more energy to do. It takes way more money than to go see a movie. So like, I don't think you can treat them like an award show for games, the same as an award show for movies, because you're being like, which of these 40 to 60 hour experiences are the best one? Most people probably played one or two, like, yeah, because there's only so many hours in a day. Like yeah. it's, it's tough. And like, I I'll say like some things about the award show are fine. Like they're sometimes like the announcements and stuff like that. It's like, okay, they're, they're making an effort, but at the same time, it's like, you're trying too hard to be not, games you're trying too hard to be an oscars or an emmys or a, yeah like make your own thing that's why like people like specific content creators so much because they they pick games or genres or whatever they like and they hone in on that and they make creative content with that so do that with an award show make like an interesting game focused award show that isn't like a bunch of people going now uh the winner is with a bunch of cameras on a bunch of game directors they're like oh the winner is hades and then everyone claps and it's oh like i don't know if that works i i mm -hmm. feel like it's a it's an admirable effort but i feel like we need to stop wanting to be 
accepted by people who don't play games as like real and official. I think if you cater to people who love video games and do something different, I think it would be better, but that's just me. Oh, beautifully said, sir. Beautifully Put said that chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree. I agree. The, the announcements are fun and it's, I would, I would, I would make, I would expand it to more of a gaming appreciation going over all the games and all yeah. the stuff that we, that we were able to play or not able to play this year. Using, using this soapbox to highlight games that didn't get the hella press like Hades did from IGN, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I reviewed Hades and IGN didn't have the review up for the next week because they had no idea that it was going to be so good. Mm-hmm. They couldn't, they couldn't, they, they, them and all of their little fucking SEO farms uh, articles um couldn't understand so uh, clearly we got a lot of traffic from from that uh review but once it blew up it blew up right everyone's covering it after that you know um you can't you can't like you can't really you you couldn't really say that um doki doki panic or doki doki literature club yeah. was gonna was gonna blow up but when it did well, now all everyone, this is the best visual novel ever. This is the greatest thing. You know, it's like, no, it's not. Um, it's, it's novel or it's creative, but it's not essentially the best thing. It's the most popular thing. Yeah. There's a thumbs up award shows in general. It's not necessarily the best thing. It's the most popular thing. There's a late game that came out, Wolf Stride, that came out. Um, mm. And that's a really good game. It's a really good game. And it's just stuff like that, you know, that you're never going to see highlighted on um, these award shows. Cupid Parasite, uh, a really good Otome game. Games like Blue Reflection, you'll never see as a uh, good JRPG. You know, it's uh, it just sucks. It just sucks. That's all. Yeah. Um, and they'll never have like visual novel representation or adventure game representation. I would it's, love to see Jeff Keighley be like the best visual novel this year. I would love to see that. is Harem Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I know awards and all that are just are just uh, ways to grease palms, and I know we got to do them. But I I think I think uh, if Jeff has this. Um, the means i think hi, every year since we launched i've done 50 games that released in 2021 uh under really underrated games and these are games that didn't win any of our uh awards for like mm-hmm. the best games and stuff they're just games that i pick out because people need to know about them um and and it's one of our most popular. It's it's more popular than what well, when we put out our best game. The article is more popular than when we put out because people want that. They want mm. to know what they miss. They know about Tales of Arise. They know about uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. They know all those games, but they don't know about Wolf Stride. And they're like, oh, yeah. I will say that uh, Scarlet Nexus. I know I gave it a seven point five, but it is a really good game. And I'm glad that it's on there. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's on there, but I think it's on there as an RPG. I would consider it more of an action game. I wouldn't consider it an RPG. There's very light. There's very light RPG mechanics in there. That it's, makes it an action RPG. It is action RPG, I would say, yeah. but I don't even think they have that category, right? Yeah. So that's, that's another thing is like, there's so many genres and subgenres in video games mm. that it's mm-hmm. like, that's even a problem with movies, like best foreign film. There are tons of movies, like, <laughs> japan yeah. alone oh my god like europe alone like the, the it's hard to there's just so much content in the world like it, it's difficult to do that i agree i agree I oh, that's it well Dog. now if we uh never get invited to the game awards again i'll be kind of bummed because i'm speaking from the heart i'm saying hey i think you could you could be better Mm-hmm. You'd represent games better. Mm-hmm. Maybe just have like a 
I know a lot of games released this year, but here's some games that might have flown under your radar. Easy yeah, that's a good idea. Easy, that's good Jeff. Step. Easy, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, I just, we're here all day. If you need some advice, yeah. just DM the, the Noisy Pixel Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I really miss the time that Joel McHale hosted. Um, oh, yeah. I remember that. It was the best fucking year of my life. I did not fucking care at all about <laughs> being there. <laughs> I love Joel McHale with all my heart. And that was an amazing, an I amazing. You talked to Reggie, and I was like, this is weird. This is like a. This is a peculiar situation. Did Jeff Winger talking to Reggie fils I I see. I love, I love community and just like yeah. uh, and community was huge right then. Like that was like That's my true. life and uh, so, good. so good. Anyway, um, let us know what you think about the VGAs and, yeah. uh, and let us know if we're wrong. Yeah. Let us know if it's the coolest thing ever or if it stinks. That said, have a good have a good week. Have a good week, everyone. Noisy pixel.